to me, I have a very broad definition of it because utility depends case by case on the person or the project, right? So utility could be for an artist as much as a smile on my face or an emotion it makes me feel. I have to wear my Vans go by drift. It makes me feel good. And that's utility to me, right? But then again, for some, for some projects, I'm expecting different things from it, right? So when, when the Board Apes came about, that's how they really like shifted the IP talk, but also utility talk, right? Because they started delivering a lot. That's when even the first conversation with, like punks and apes started really happening, which was like, y'all do nothing, but we're getting this, where, but both work. Like the historical slash identity, brandability, and the asset that represents the crypto punk for me is enough utility. I don't need more. I don't want a coin for it, right? Token. But from the apes, I think it's cool, right? And I think it's necessary for them to keep delivering things like other sideline, the mutant, the kennel, et cetera. So for me, utility is very broad. It could be anything that adds value to me as a holder. But what's value then? It could be an emotion or it could be financial. It could be a token that I then cash out for $100,000 that we've seen with the Board API Club, right? So that's how I see uh, utility. It could be access. It could be, I mean, all the keywords, right? It's like, that's just the way I see it. It's really so you see case. a very broad definition of utility, um, but if we take it back, for example, to the board apes, right, they launched with a roadmap, which was also something innovative for the space, mm -hmm. kind of like you're buying this and this is what we will seek to deliver in the next six to 12 months. You know, everything from companion drop to uh, an eventual real life party, ape fest that happened here in New York in November of, of last year. And, and, and people started taking utility as to, you know, mean that they were going to get to do something with their NFT beyond just, you know, the beauty of the smile that might be brought up with seeing something like Bad Duck Jones art or Fugocious art. Mm -hmm. um, and the market has taken it and run with it. What do you think outside of, you know, the intangibles that you've described, but what do you see as the more promising uh, uses of that utility promise or that utility function that NFTs can unlock um, in the world? It's, it's really incredible because they can unlock anything. Like even projects I've seen that are not doing good. Like for me, like a project can almost never die because you never know what you can end up adding to it. Like in a year of time or like in six months time or three months and you can shape and shift differently, right? That's why some founders are better than others because they know how to like, like adapt and change because space changes a lot. That's why roadmaps are very hard to, to follow in Web3 because it's like, well, like, things change overnight in this space. But, you know, you take in terms of the, the apes, I think like, I don't know. I, I just I just think like, it, the only issue where we're at right now is a year ago, the conversation would be different because we'd have expectations from every team now, et cetera, that this is what you should, they're gonna do. We're gonna hold them accountable to it. And now like a year later, it's just like, we've seen so much utility just never happen or so much utility realize that we don't even need it or want it or maybe like it was just a buzzword and being used and abused also in the many, many, many ways. So it's just a weird conversation to me now. I think utility should be like, I don't know. It, it really depends. Like from the Board APL Club, they're delivering more a game now, which is great utility for the ape because then he's going to be probably able to play and earn token for it, right? Um, you know, I, I don't know. It's uh, it's a, it's like, you know what I mean? Like it's just we've gone to like this yeah, weird no. phase of utility. That's why I'm asking you because, you know, it's so um, it's been one of those things where people confuse number go up for utility as well. That's right? The if thing. the price of the that's NFT the appreciates the and for the broader uh, real vision audience that might not be deep in the weeds of NFTs, uh, like some others, uh, NFTs have done really, really well as far as price performance, not just board age, but stuff like doodles, stuff like cool cats they had their moment um and so many other projects people tend to like them even more as the price goes up which is really funny um, well that's the thing too that's utility too for most people let's be honest on real vision because it's called real for a reason like you know <laughs> most people's utility is number go up like literally i i am a market participant i and also i'm a founder so i study the market like most people only want the price to go up but it's tough let me tell you that yeah, definitely tough and obviously depends on a lot of other, other reasons. So people confuse utility for number go up or utility, give me something that I can sell for money and obviously monetize yeah. my NFT. But, you know, you know, founders have seen that there's more to utility than just making your collectors rich, which is nice to have, right? It's, it's a way of delivering value, but there's much more to that. And that's where you come in 
you obviously are a communicator, a content creator. You saw an opportunity to create a Web3, uh, you know, decentralized media platform. And so you started Rock Radio, which you know, I'll, I'll let you describe what Rock Radio is. Yeah, I mean, Rock Radio is a fully decentralized media ecosystem slash platform uh, that is tokenized and governed by DAO. So the Rock DAO and the Rock Token. And so our vision for it, when I say fully decentralized, is over a couple of years, right? Because you know, decentralization as it is now, you don't just get decentralization, right? You gotta work towards it. Uh, that's how you know things tend to go. And so, and so, basically speaking, is that we run, we have multiple sh- hosts, part of Rug Radio, that run multiple shows right now on Twitter Spaces. But we're start, we're platform agnostic, so we're t- starting to take it to other platforms like Apple Podcasts. Spotify, we have YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, all that stuff in coming. And so we found a way to, to equip these hosts with a host pass or creator pass that yields them token for creating content. And then our holders of the NFTs, the Rugby Genesis NFTs, to yield token every day for being part of the ecosystem. So in this matter, you get rewarded for creating content, but you also get rewarded for participating and consuming that content, right? And the way it started, it stemmed off an idea that we had on Twitter Spaces back then, if I could take it back a bit, is we're all talking on a 10 hour long Twitter Spaces. And then someone in my Discord was like, it's too bad I gotta go to sleep because I have my $11 an hour job tomorrow I have to go back to. And I was like, wait, this space, because we just had a conversation for I don't know how many minutes about how this space is incredible, is permissionless, there's a way to create revenue and to really change your life, but also to like learn a lot about it and change the world, right? So I was like, what if people could get paid to consume content that we're producing every single day on the space, et cetera, create some sort of like UBI so that they can educate themselves and therefore go make a living within the space, no matter the pocket of the space. And at the same time, the creators who are constantly putting content out there get rewarded for that too. Because something that in web two you didn't see, because though Web2 helped master the creation of massive networks that we just talked about, Web3 allows you to get paid. And that's the core, the key difference that's happening here. So that's what Rug Radio is. It's like, I know I, I, I can get super long-winded about it because I love it and I'm passionate. And it's still a very complicated concept because we're so new to these things and DAOs and tokens, et cetera. But the broad vision is that, is to really create a media platform that's owned by the people, where people own the narrative and create that narrative because it's super important to me. So Web3 has been called like the ownership layer of the of the internet. And so what you're telling us is that Rock Radio allows you to not just be a content creator and monetize your content, but you also mm-hmm. get to be a participant and earn something from, you know, being on the other side of that mm-hmm. and kind of like bringing it full, full circle. And then you integrate NFTs, you mentioned kind of like the creator pass, you mentioned the participant pass. Can you explain more as to how those NFTs interact with the ecosystem or with each other? Yeah, of course. So basically the way we did the launch is we did 20,000 membership passes that were free. So people just had to pay for the gas, which is actually pretty low. Uh, shout out to Syndicate DAO for that. But the gas like like a little 10 bucks. Uh, and so basically we did, and a thousand of them went to the DAO, so 19,000 of them. So you would get a free, a free membership pass, right? The first utility of that NFT, which is a, a fully composable on-chain ERC721 a token was that you would get to mint one Genesis rug on 1.11, January 11th for 0.11 ETH. But that's just, so it acts as a mint pass, but that's not just it, right? It's actually a key to the entire ecosystem that we're building. Like right now, for example, I know we're platform agnostic, but we're also building our very own Web3 platform where you're gonna be able to participate to earn on the platform, on all the content that we're creating on multiple shows, but also learn to earn, right? So you're gonna be able to take quizzes, et cetera, on the matter, because our key is really, we're really big on education at Rug Radio. And so you're gonna be able to earn token for that, right? And we've already done that, but we can get to that after. But anyway, so you have the membership pass, which gives you access to the ecosystem that we're building, right? And so there's 19,000 of them in circulation. But then you also have 19,000 NFTs, because the other thousand are in the DAO, which those NFTs yield a different amount of rug token per day, depending on how rare they are, right? So it's five, seven, or 11. And so these tokens, once you amass 1,800 of them, you can get one RDAO token, which is a DAO token, so that you can get access to the DAO, which governs over the entire thing. And so the stage that we're in right now with Rug Radio is that we have a 33-member DAO council that was elected last month, which is incredible. Like people such as Keith Grossman, President of Time, John Legere, XCO, T-Mobile, 
uh, Anjali Kapoor, who's an ex, she's uh, she's uh, works at Dow Jones and she's ex uh, CNN, all these big like media brands and companies. Awesome, she's in Hong Kong, and but also like the daily community builders of the NFT space and other builders and founders are not as big, but are actually building in a space like Richard, who's massive with Manifold, Betty, with Dead Fella. So, anyways. We have a DAO council and they're working on all the framework right now so that the people can go and vote on it. So whether it's on the core team, on the shows, on the content, on the platform side. So that's really how it is. It's going to be like, it's super participatory and it's something that everybody can partake in.